specifically with the issue of consciousness. So, so, I, so I've been pretty careful up until now to say very little about consciousness per se, right? I, I mostly talk about very, very functional, um, publicly observable behavior. So, so intelligent behavior as problem solving and, um, you know, these, these cognitive uh, capacities that are kind of like um, uh, uh, experimentally observable uh, third person kind of science. And so, so that was on purpose, not, 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 but, but, but not because I, you know, it's not that I don't think consciousness is an important problem. I think it's it's an extremely important problem. I don't think it, it doesn't exist. Uh, I don't think that the mind body kind of uh, issues are not important. They are. But I do think it's important to make as much progress as we can uh, on quote unquote easy problems without immediately uh, sort of um, uh, combining them with with extremely difficult problems. Right. And so and so, I, you know, once once you start talking about consciousness, things get off the rails very quickly and so so i've wanted to for most of my stuff which up until now has not really needed to talk about consciousness per se i wanted to kind of let that stuff cook in its own area that doesn't that doesn't get into all of those issues about consciousness um but i do think it's an important problem i am writing some stuff about it and i think i guess i guess the only thing i'll i'll say about it now is that typically uh you know when when people talk about consciousness they typically not everybody but but often people think about the sort of input side of things meaning what the, what the, you know the, the standard uh, def, the standard definition is what does it feel like to be a whatever you know a bat or or a human robot or whatever you know what's it like to what's it like to be so they focus on the experience which is the kind of sensory side if you will um and 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 what I think what I think is is probably more I mean they're both important but the, but the thing that's that needs more emphasis is the actuation side it's the action side what is it like to do to be a to be an agent that has the ability to do things and and <clears throat> and and the reason the reason I think I think this isn't getting any attention is this there is a there is a theory of mind called epiphenomenalism and in epiphenomenalism you sort of assume that okay. Uh, you, you know, you can say that, yes, these um, these uh, uh, conscious sensory states that I have are real, but they don't do anything. So so the input side is real, but there is no output side. It's a view. I'm not saying I support it, but but it's it's a view. What doesn't exist, to my knowledge, is the opposite side. I've never seen I've never heard anybody have a view that says, well, the action part is real. The free will is real, but the sensory stuff is is an, is an illusion. Right. I, I've never heard of that of that view. So the fact that there's only one, you know, it's not symmetric. There's only one one version of this tells you that people are very much into the um, kind of perception side and not so much into the action side. And 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 I mean, I mean, some obviously are people who work on active inference and things like that, of course, pay pay attention to both sides of the equation. But but I think I think that that is really the mark of the agent is sure. What does it feel like? But more even more importantly, what do I do next? That's really what what drives all of this is that is that uh, I need to know what to do next. What what's what's my next move as an agent? And that that I think is 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 really fundamental to being. And and I think it's going to be fundamental to the consciousness problem too. It's going to be it's it's much of it is all of the decisions about where is the boundary between you and the outside world and, and all these kinds of things that are that are fundamental to defining yourself and what are you, you know, and all of those are driven by the need to act, to choose a next action. And so so that's that's kind of where, where I look at. Are you able to give a precise definition of what you say consciousness is at this point? I, I, th I think that uh, we need to be clear, and, and I think Dennett talks about this in, in one of his papers, this idea of a bait and switch. You know, you, you say you're going to talk about consciousness, but what you really end up doing is telling a story about physiology and behavior, right? And so, and so I really think we need to um, keep clear if you think if th th there, there's all the science that we can do in third person. And the mark of science that you do in third person is that you don't change much, if at all, doing the experiment. So you do a certain experiment and maybe you learn something which in a, which does change you a little bit but 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 you're still the same you're 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 standing away from the experiment at some distance so so to speak um you're you're still whoever you are you made you 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 know you've done the experiment and you've learned something mm. uh, if you're going to work on consciousness there's no way to do third per I, I don't believe there's any good way to do third person research on consciousness it's it's very hard m most people who do that are really studying physiology and behavior if you're going to do actual experiments on consciousness, you're part of the experiment. You you are going to be changed by that experiment. So, for example, um, if you want to know what it's like to be 
something, <clears throat> the only the only actual way that you're going to get that level of information is to, in some important way, merge with that agent. So maybe we connect brains in some way, right? Uh, you know, some now 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 if you and I connect our brains, I don't find out what it's like to be you, and you don't find out what it's like to be me. Instead, we find out what it's like to be us. That's so right. it's not quite the same, but nevertheless, th that's as close as you're going to get. And otherwise, you know, I can. Uh, it, 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 I, I think I described this at the end of the of, of my tame paper where um, uh, you know you can sort of imagine like doing pure third person neuroscience where you get some electrodes stuck in somebody's brain and you're sort of reading on a screen and then you decide that you know what this this screen and, and all this stuff it's a low low bandwidth I really need to get in there and so you have you know some kind of a brain interface on your own that's that's uh, d delivering the data right into your brain and then eventually you say yeah that, that that's not good enough either I'm just going to fuse my brain directly to to this other brain and, and you can do that you know by with with it bioengineering um, and then uh, then 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 now 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 you're into first person science right and so you use you, you sort of smoothly and 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 that's experiments with uh i don't know people talk about experiments with psychedelics and yes. and meditation and uh, personal development and whatever studying consciousness you're not going to be the same coming out of it as you went in that's i think the the only way that you can really study consciousness per se it reminds me of something kevin mitchell says in one of his books, Free Agents, he talks about, I move, therefore I am. Is that a yeah. lot of what yeah. you're Yeah, yeah, no, that's, 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 that's exactly right. And all, all the work on um, uh, uh, active inference, uh, to, to, you know, I didn't mean to say that nobody's paying attention to it. I just meant that it's, uh, you know, in the general, you know, kind of uh, uh, the, 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 the field of people who think about this stuff, there's a lot more emphasis on the, on the internal perceptions and, and so on than, than on the actions. But yeah, I think, I think that's right. I think it's movement. And, and I, would, um, I would extend that to say that it's movement, not just in three-dimensional space, which is we, it's easy for us to recognize, but it's movement in other problem spaces. So changes of gene expression, figuring out, well, what gene do I turn on next? Uh, changes in morphogenesis, um, you know, how many fingers should, should this arm have? And should we be an arm at all? Or should we be a leg or a foot? Uh, and uh, um, movement in, in metabolic space, movement in physiological space, who knows, you know, linguistic space. So there's all kinds of other spaces. Mm, yeah, the, the necessity to act in all these spaces defines who or what you are based on what you have, what you have control over and what the, you know, what you also, of course, the recursive self model of, of what, what you think you have control over and so on. You, you just reminded me of another one, because uh, I said, Kevin says, I am, I, I move, therefore I am. Carl Freston says, I am, therefore I think. And, and, and it sort of, sort of interplays with it. When I spoke to Carl, he, he was telling me about your work, your upcoming work, and the work that Chris Fields, Mark Solms, all you guys are doing some amazing work in these fields. Um, what excites you about this at the moment? And what, what are you guys currently, what's this main goal? at the moment <laughs> yeah um yeah well i mean i'm just i'm just excited i mean what a, what a group of people to be part of right yeah. like i'm just thr thrilled to death to be able to work with chris and carl and mark um yeah amazing amazing minds um we have a chance to say something quite rigorous about what minds are and where they come from the, th the thing is that for you know for how many thousands of years various pre-scientific human societies have had this idea that uh, you know, there's a spirit in each rock and every tree has a, you know, you can, you know, the environment is a being and the, all the trees and all the rocks and everything. So it's one thing to say that, but it's something else to have a rigorous quantitative model that tells you how much, right? What kind and how much. So here's a, here's a, here's a, a system and it might be a rock and it might be a computer and it might be some sort of robot or a synthetic, uh, you know, synthetic biobot or whatever, whatever. But to really have the tools to be able to say, okay, uh, what what kind of cognition and how much is here, and how do I how do I best relate to this agent? What's the most effective way of relating to them? What's the most ethical way of relating to them? Um, to finally start to develop some tools that allow you to do that in a really principled way, I think is a, is a huge advance over the old insight that you know mind is everywhere. Like that's the, that's a good first you know zero order uh, pass at this. But but now but now we're actually um, able to 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 make that much more specific, much more defensible, um, actually integrated into the rest of science, because this is I feel very strongly about this that these ideas 
are not just things that you can have philosophical arguments about. And then some people say, some people, you know, I've, I've heard this too. Uh, I'll give a talk. And then some people say, uh, wow, uh, we, we, we love the new data and the new capabilities, but we wish you'd stop talking about all this philosophical stuff. Like it's, 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 it's like, we, we, you know, we don't like it. It's just stop talking about a lot, just do the experiment. And, and my point is, yeah, no, there's a reason why nobody did these experiments before. Mm -hmm. And that's because the philosophy is actually really critical to be being able to have these kinds of ideas. Right. And so, um, <clears throat> making all this testable and uh, connected to the rest of the scientific enterprise, where you know, for example, my 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 you know unusual views on uh, cellular agency and all that, they actually have specific implications for regenerative medicine. Mm -hmm. And if you're into regenerative medicine, you can't really ignore all this stuff. It, it's, it's part of you know, and 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 hopefully it'll 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 be you know even more. Um, uh, uh, kind of uh, impactful if once once we you know once we get closer to actual uh, clinical applications. So 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 I, I'm just super excited. I think I think each of these people that you mentioned has a really uh, amazing grasp on multiple fields. You know, so 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 physics and uh, um, in the case of Mark, uh, you know, uh, psychoanalysis and, and and stuff like that, which I think is very important. In keeping with Mark, I remember once you and him having a conversation about homeostasis in general. At some point, you and Mark, you don't necessarily disagree, but he's concerned that at some point your approach becomes a little bit more panpsychist with this technological approach from, uh, of mind everywhere. Uh, how do you how do you see it? Do you see it becoming that way at any point? Um, I don't I don't disagree that it's that it's panpsychist, um, except that there's there's two different ways to do panpsychism. Mm -hmm. the, the traditional way is to say here's all of traditional physics and all of standard normal physics. And also I'm going to paint some stuff onto these electrons and things that are, you know, sort of little tiny hopes and dreams that, that the electrons have. Right. So that's one, that's one way of doing it. That's I, I don't, I don't like that way. And that's the, that's the thing that most people I think have in mind when they object to panpsychism um, because having a perfectly good physics that works and then saying, okay, now I'm going to add a bunch of stuff to it. That doesn't do anything, but the, you know, it's sort of there. Uh, yes, that's that I think is is problematic. But there's a, but another way. the 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 other uh, the other type of panpsychism is what Chris and 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 um, and Carl Friston are doing, which is <clears throat> to reformulate basic physics as fundamentally first a, uh, a a a protocognitive process. See, that's a completely different different kettle of fish because what you're saying there is it's not that the traditional physics is a okay. And I want to I want to add some stuff to it that we don't really need. What you're saying is, no, actually, traditional physics is a, um, uh, a, a an edge case of systems that have a, 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 a certain level of, of cognition. But actually, those systems and, and also all the very complex stuff eventually leading up to humans and beyond. Uh, are actually features of a much of, of a deeper underlying reality. And, and that one. I like much better. I think that's a kind of panpsychism that I that I uh, would support. And the other key thing is, in my mind, uh, the the useful thing about panpsychism is that it needs to be uh, it needs to have an empirical component. So mm -hmm. when somebody says, you know, well, how about this rock? Does this rock have have a mind? Yes. Well, how about this one? Oh, definitely. Well, what's the difference? I don't know. So right, so so that that doesn't work. But 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 having a um uh, an empirical set of tools that tell you under what conditions do you ascribe different kinds of minds to specific uh, systems, right? And what, what what how why you know what what's a what's a principled way to ascribe mind to and what kind of mind and so on. Th that's that's really key. So so you need a panpsychism that isn't a philosophical position, and that's why that's why Tame um, has the word engineering in it because. I really think, and 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 by the way, I don't think engineering is the end all and be all of, of human existence for sure. But but I think we can get very far with an engineering perspective, which says you need to have a practical, you know, whatever whatever concepts you're you're pushing have to have a practical implication, and they need to help you do better in the real world. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's the beauty of engineering is that we get to find out who's right and who's wrong by by doing experiments and by seeing what these various views allow you to do what what do they facilitate for research and so on